I was worried about Jagex not changing anything about Coliseum in a timely manner, so I am glad after some community pushing we got some invo changes. In Mod Sarni's original tweet, there were good ideas for some changes, but based on the wording it sounded like many of the changes would make several invos completely free. The suggested Manticore invo, three tiers of increased max hit for Manticores, was the most boring and lazy thing to slap into Coliseum. I'm happy they instead went a much more interesting direction with that invo, and I think overall this was a pretty great update with only some issues. A lot of the invos are still the same, aside from the slight tweaks with Blasphemy to not trigger on self-damage items like Divines or Soul Reaper Axe. Alright, let's start off with the Coliseum changes. Bees! Increased time between movement from 7 ticks, 4.2 seconds, to 12 ticks, 7.2 seconds. Increased respawn delay from 18 ticks, about 11 seconds, to 50 ticks, 30 seconds. This still isn't viable, it just makes you waste ticks at killing things and is still annoying on the boss. This invo can really only be used for pure wave farming as it makes the boss nearly impossible. They really should just make these the same as Zebak Jugs, adding no attack delay and simply requiring one tick to attack them. This allows for some neat time saves and interesting play if you are very skilled, giving free bonus splats from a one tick scythe, free one tick venator ricochets, or free one tick chins. It also just generally makes them less annoying. Doom! Doom stacks reset to zero at the end of each wave. Death is guaranteed at 15, 10, or 5 stacks of Doom depending on the active modifier tier. Doom stacks will only be applied by Colosseum sources. Instances of self-dealt damage like the Soul Reaper Axe or Divine Potions will no longer add Doom stacks. Level 1 for almost any player is a completely free invo. I went and counted and I actually would have died to the boss my first completion with even Doom 1. I actually had 17 hits total. So this may not be a completely free take for a first cape. I think after completing first cape, most people would take tier 1 and tier 2 with no issue. Tier 3 I take now for speedruns for a free invo. I take no brew, so tanking 5 hits just kills me anyways. I wish they would have made it so you keep some remaining stack at the end of the wave. I would just subtract 5 stacks per wave to keep it from being completely free for most players but also not making tier 3 any harder than it already is. It would also still encourage avoiding stacks if possible. The Doom Scorpion has been replaced by an entirely different invocation, Manti Mayhem. Manti Mayhem has three tiers of upgrades, each making Manticores more dangerous. Tier 1 adds an additional projectile per orb, meaning you'll get hit twice as many times for each attack, making hits off prayer more punishing. This also accrues two stacks of Doom if you have that. Tier 2 adds a Venom effect to any damage received from the Manticores attacks. Tier 3 removes the forced melee orb in the final slot of the Manticores attack sequence. Effectively, this makes the order of attacks totally random. At first, this was just proposed as a scaling damage to Manticore DPS each tier, no new mechanics or anything. This is a much more interesting direction to take this than just pure max hits. Learners likely will avoid this as one missed orb flick will almost always smite your prayer and get you killed. The Venom requires two sand few doses to cure, making average runs tighter on prayer if you either waste doses or end up bringing anti-venom. I have been using Lunars with Spellbook Swap using the Ring of Shadows to smuggle runes to allow me to spam the spell Cure Me to negate this. Tier 3 is what I suggested they do with the Manticores to add complexity and something interesting to the invo choices, but it does make some solves a lot harder. Much of the time this doesn't even do anything, rarely you will get a stack that requires a unique Z solve when it normally wouldn't. Sometimes this is even helpful and allows stacks to work that normally wouldn't. When taking this in runs, I died multiple times from being smited by missing a flick or misclicking out. We're going to get back to that. The average missed orb hits for close to 50 damage and will almost certainly instantly smite you as well with Blasphemy. I decided for speedruns that taking this is pretty bad and instead started opting for a combination of Doom, Myopia, and Flare. Tier 1 really needs to be shuffled to the third tier. It's by far the most dangerous upgrade. Double damage does not compare to slightly harder pillar stacks sometimes or some Venom. Tier 1 should be Venom, 2 orbs, 3 double damage. Myopia. Myopia now affects auto-cast spells, manually cast spells remain unaffected. So this is beyond a dumb change. You should never be auto-casting in the first place as it has a one tick delay on your cast. Basically, this just makes it a bit harder for early wave farmers. This simply should always apply the penalty auto-cast or not. Spells should not behave differently with auto-cast versus manual ever for any reason, especially with them talking about removing the auto cast delay in the future. Fix it or don't, don't Frankenstein fix a bug for no reason. Relentless, tiers one and two now cause enemy attacks to ignore 33% and 66% of your defense respectively. Tier three is unchanged and ignores all defense. Bonus minimum hits from this modifier remain unchanged at one, three, and six per tier. This is what I wanted changed with Relentless. Before it was a basically turn off your Justy slash Torva button, 
and you'd never pick it unless it was boss. Tier 1 is very viable, but I'd probably still avoid Tier 2 and definitely Tier 3. This has changed it from a never pick to a potential pick in later waves. Totemic increased respawn timer from 1 minute to 2 minutes after a totem has been destroyed, reduced healing from 40% to 30% of the targeted NPC's health. I wanted Jagex to change totems and bees to be like Zebak Jugs where you could get zero tick shots off on them to make them more appeasing to take, rather than an annoyance mid-fight. These also don't have 100% accuracy, so you can just straight up miss your Tebow shot on them. We don't even know their stats, as you can't monster examine them. I have missed a Tebow shot on one across the boss arena, which nearly killed me. The increased timer means this is pretty fine for the boss fight now. You are guaranteed to only get a single totem, but overall, this is still a no-go for waves. These need to be a guaranteed max hit, just like Fremies and Bees, as well as zero tick delay. And some changes I'd still make to the other invos, but they didn't change. There's Frailty. The overhealing block should be moved to tier 3. I think if you really want to overbrew midwave, you should be allowed to. The punishment is you're wasting your brew. It makes it so Blasphemy is always the starting invo, and makes the start of Colosseum boring, and not really a roguelite. If they make Glory affect loot, which they mentioned on the Q&A, then making this the difficult but more loot choice is probably fine. Re-entry, this really needs a rebalance to make it a potential choice. This is the most interesting invocation, but also is just too punishing to ever pick usually. Tier 1 should not be permanent at all, and dissolve after 15 seconds or so. This would prevent those cases where you literally cannot reach a mob because you painted the one tile in front of it, but would still require you reposition and do something else while it disappears. Tier 2 being when the permanence for the wave begins, and Tier 3 being permanent for the Coliseum makes a lot more sense to me. Volatility? I don't know what they could do to this to make it a little more visually clear that something will blow up, or a range indication of where it will explode to. Maybe an animation showing a shockwave that sucks in from the area this affects and then exploding would probably work quite well. Tier 2 could have two rings of the shockwave from further away to show exactly what area this affects. Sparks on the mob to show that you have volatility active would also help a lot. The skill with this is mostly just remembering that you took it, which is annoying. Rune Light could also just be allowed to dynamically throw a radius marker when things die, showing the area they explode. Ooh, big cheating alert. Ooh, big cheating alert. No monkey has suggested a cheat hack injection code line break hack. When Jagex fails on indicators and don't have the budget to add them, Rune Light is capable of filling the gap. Also, change back the Fremi Archer. It was actually really refreshing for both casual and speed runs. Venator ricochets off archers on your targets was slightly better than scything and a mobile medkit you can rely on was also pretty interesting. Loot changes? I don't mind these being more common. I saw only a few drops day one and nothing since. The problem is all the rewards aside from Quiver and Coliseum are dead content. Echo Boots, or Clown Shoes as I like to call them, recoil one damage on a hit spot taken per four ticks in a three by three area around you. These boots are roughly one fifth as effective as a recoil ring which came out in 2004. Even at Vardorvis or Duke, where you constantly take chip damage, these are likely not worth using over Prims. Glaive! This is outclassed by Dragon Warhammer and BGS, except at Maiden and Mega Scale Chambers, which makes it too niche for a good reward from something that is considered the hardest content currently in release. Even with it being uncapped defense, most monsters have high enough range defense that landing the spec isn't worth it over a ZCB spec. The percent of defense drain just simply needs to be increased. This doesn't need to be a super niche item, it's the rarest reward from Inferno level content. It is allowed to be better than the Dragon Warhammer, a drop from a Slayer mob, and the BGS, a drop from the easiest God Wars dungeon boss. 15% per splat for 30% drain total on both landing seems more than fair and allow it to compete with the other two without replacing them. It's currently 10% each for 20% total. Even if it drained 40% total, I would be more than happy with that. These items should be good. Sunfire Armor is a troll. It's good they made it obtainable in the early waves like they promised on release, but nobody in their right mind is farming Colosseum for this armor set, even Iron Man. This is fashionscape armor at best. I'm okay with funny cosmetic if the other drops are actually somewhat useful. Side note, please, please fix the hitboxes. You can literally click between the NPC's legs and armpits, accidentally clicking through a monster and eating the entire other side of a pillar stack because of a bad stick figure hitbox is helpful for no one. I have never once clicked between a mob's legs and gone, yes, I want to click behind you. The Serpent Shaman has a box around him, but all the other monsters have a pixel-perfect outline around their hull with expressive attack animations. It's 50-50 whether you click through or not. The glory system is still completely useless, and reworking this for glory grinding runs is boring. Changing it into a loot modifier like they should have from the start would make things much more interesting for farming. Taking bad invocations on purpose and still trying to go quickly with them 
is a much deeper system than glorious glory. The board number go big, bigly big, bigly number go glory. Uh, overall, it's less free than I expected, and I'm glad they didn't nerf the invos too hard and make the content too easy. It's one thing to make something too hard and fix it, but if Jagex made it too easy, they would never have fixed the difficulty back because of the masses complaining. If this is the last update for Colosseum, like I'm worried it is, then it'll be left like another Toa, full of potential but left sitting there, purely for the cape and nothing else. If you have been wondering where I went and why there are so few live streams, I've started streaming a ridiculous amount of hours on Kick. I do still stream on Twitch slash YouTube, but it's only for a couple hours before moving over to Kick. So likely that's where I've been. That's it for the video. Leave a like if you liked it and or subscribe. Thanks guys.